everyone and welcome to web 3 d Consortium's annual member meeting. This is our first virtual member meeting and most of us are coming to you from our homes. We hope you all are safe and thank you for taking the time to join us today to learn about our organization and our standards and its applications. I am Anita Hovele, the Executive Director of web 3 d Consortium. And we have a lot to share with you today from how the standard is evolving to how our members are deploying mission critical business X3D applications. We have uh, several leaders here today who together with our community are making this happen. We're going to start with a brief overview of the consortium and uh, X3D, which is our standard. And then we will uh, continue with uh, a showcase of our member applications, followed by presentations from our working group chairs on the activities that are happening within our working groups. Uh, we hope that you learn a lot today and you're motivated to join us as we build this open platform together. So about Web3D Consortium, who are we? We are an international nonprofit member-funded standards development organization. And the two standards that we develop are X3D and HNM. X3D is ge next generation VRML. It's a robust uh, specification for 3D functionality, supporting interoperability with other industry standards. Um, our standard allows 3D scenes to be used by a wide variety of applications. And most importantly, our standards are backward compatible, which gives you long-term stability and which lets you protect your investments in building these 3D applications. So we are engaged with, uh, with, the, tech, uh, with the community of technologists, enterprises, and also artists. Uh, our membership spans from academia, industry, government, and professional. So what are our goals? Our most important goal is to encourage enterprises and industry to use open 3D standards. And how do we do that? Uh, we work with uh, our members, uh, the 3D community, government and industry, universities, and research organizations. Uh, we are empowering this community of 3D and VR developers by providing these technologies that are open. We also guide policymakers uh, on how and why to use open standards. So we have two active standards here, uh, the X3D version 3.3 and HNM version 2.0. These are both ISO ratified. And currently we have X3D version four, which is in draft right now. Um, it's integrated with HTML5. Uh, and so this is a great opportunity for you guys to join and participate uh, in our working groups and be a part of this uh, development. So what is X3D? X3D is extensible 3D. It's royalty free, it's an ISO standard. It's a specification for publishing, viewing, printing, and archiving interactive 3D models on the web. It's a language to add various 3D assets into one application. So it's a hub for 3D applications. X3D, as I mentioned before, is next generation VRML. X3D started as an XML encoding of VRML. VRML, VRML is a subset of X3D. So X3D has superseded VRML now. X3, we've added shaders, geolocations, and other cutting edge 3D features. And we support several application domains. So as you see, we have extended VRML and made it more usable. So 
So X3D is a scene graph for real-time interactive 3D graphics. It's a higher level scene graph that describes uh, many types of geometries, lights, interaction, animation, and more. So it's event-driven, as you see in the uh, diagram there. Uh, it's a logical event-driven rep uh, representation of a graphical scene. <clears throat> A collection of nodes in a graph or a tree structure. <coughs> so X3D has multiple encodings, multiple APIs, and it's HTML and CSS compatible. It's a publishing specification for interactive 3D. A language to add 3D models, geospatial, and imagery into one system. So its profile, it has a profile and component structure to promote interoperability, and it has uh, several features, uh, several 3D features to make a very high-end 3D application, an interactive 3D web application. So as you see, web is a platform, so X3D can be used anywhere, any platform, any domain. So it runs on multiple devices from phones to caves. It's used in multiple domains from medical to CAD to 3D printing and scanning and more. It has interactivity and also animation. So we have two open source implementations that are widely used, uh, and those are X3DOM and Xsite. Uh, they are JavaScript APIs, and uh, they use WebGL for native rendering. No plugins required. We also have standalone browsers, if you need those for maybe a cave environment, and uh, the two implementations for standalone browsers are Instant Reality by Fraunhofer and uh, BS Contact by BitManagement. So let's look at uh, the ecosystem out there and compare some of the technologies that are available there. We have X3D, we have WebGL, we have GLTF. Now I've just mentioned these through. I know there are others in the ecosystem too. But I just wanted to differentiate these three and just discuss a, a little bit about, you know, where each of us stand in the ecosystem. We believe that we have, uh, we have room and space for each of these technologies. So X3D is a declarative way of uh, defining your 3D models and 3D applications, and it's used by web programmers. It's XML-based. Whereas uh, WebGL is an imperative uh, 3D approach where you have to define the box and then the declarative approach, you're just declaring a box. So it's much easier. Whereas GLTF is just a transmission format where you can transmit 3D assets, uh, 3D geometry plus material rendering. Even though you have all this, you still need a language like X3D to compose these 3D assets into a meaningful 3D web application. So that's a sweet spot, is to bring all these assets together and build a meaningful, powerful 3D web application. Uh, a, little bit of, a little bit about our history. As you can see, um, we have evolved. Uh, from Wormel, uh, Wormel 2.0 to X3D 3.0. And during our evolution, there have been several open source implementations uh, developed by our community. So from 2005 to 2013, it was mostly a standalone implementation, and we had open source implementate browser implementations like XJ3D, Instant Reality, BS Contact, Free world. Then around 2014-15, uh, in-browser rendering, declarative 3D on the declarative 3D on the web was available with WebGL. So.
So we have two more uh, implementations here. That's X3DOM and Excite. These are JavaScript, a JavaScript APIs used to render X3D. And uh, immediately following these, we had support for VR devices. So there is a VR device support within X3DOM. And then uh, binary streaming with the AR, 3D, VR, GLTF uh, became prevalent in 2016. So we started uh, looking at GLTF and how to inline GLTF uh, into X3D. So now we have version 4.0 which has uh, all of these features. It's um, HTML5, uh, it's integrated with HTML5, and uh, it is uh, a pretty robust uh, system uh, for a very high-end 3D application. So how does all this happen, all this work that's going on? It's mostly uh, work done by volunteers and members who work together on uh, developing these specifications. We have several working groups um, in every domain, as you can see, from medical to user experience to semantics. And all these working groups fall under the um, umbrella of X3D. Uh, and that is a group that uh, takes the standard to ISO for ratification. We also work with several SDO uh, organizations, standards development organization, W3C, for converging all our web <clears throat> needs and uh, you know, converging with HTML5, integrating with HTML5, you're working closely with W3C. OGC for all the geospatial needs that we have. Uh, and uh, Kronos, of course, because of FGL and GLTF, we work with them closely. DICOM to converge our image formats. Um, and that's a very important uh, partnership we have. And then in the last couple of years, we've started working with HL7 and IEEE 3D body processing groups. HL7 for mostly visualizing healthcare data. And IEEE uh, is uh, very much interested in uh, visualizing 3D body models in, in uh, X3D using our metadata capabilities. So we are, how are we bringing all this together? As uh, I mentioned earlier, the consortium working groups uh, helps in the standardization of X3D, which is further ratified uh, through ISO. We also work with several standards associations, and together uh, we deploy this ISO standard, which is used by our members, our community, the government, the industry, which finally takes us to adoption. So who is using X3D? Uh, there are several companies here. As you see, many Fortune 500 companies are using X3D here along with uh, several government organizations, NIST, NASA, uh, the <clears throat> Navy, um, and uh, uh, there are many organizations, the Army is using it, and uh, you know, several other departments within the Department of Defense are using X3D. So here are some highlights from 2020 and 2019. Uh, because of the COVID crisis, we had members, uh, we are Web3D members, National Institute of Health and National Postgraduate School, Naval Postgraduate School are providing helpful 3D printing resources in this crisis. We've been working very hard to publish our uh, draft of version 4.0. And HNM 2.0 was released. Um, we had uh, a president uh, give a keynote uh, speech at the HL7 uh, meeting uh, in October last year. And we also were key presenters at the 3D Body Tech Conference. Uh, we had uh, three important events, uh, SIGGRAPH 2019, Web3D 2019, our annual conference. And we also had a collaborative 3D visualization workshop with the Department of Defense. 
So X3D is evolving. We are going to hear about this uh, um, in our next presentation on what are the highlights. So I won't go into a lot of detail about this. But a couple of things is the HTML5 integration, the inlining of GLTF assets, and physical-based rendering. Volume visualization and annotation, these are some important features that our members uh, were looking for, and we are going to be providing them with 4.0. And yes, and also we do, these implementations have been tested, and uh, we have two open source uh, implementations, x 3 dom and x -Site. Again, the version X3D version 4, it's going to be HTML integrated and it's going to be a hub for your 3D applications. So these are well-tested, long-lasting specifications uh, and uh, it really helps our users uh, to build interoperable open applications because of the archivable uh, stability and uh, testing that we do before these uh, standards are published. Again, these are the new STO collaborations, uh, visualizing healthcare data for HL7 and visualization of uh, 3D body models, uh, enabling uh, metadata exchange, uh, which is very crucial for this, especially when you have uh, scanned body models that you need to share and it has to be open and there are a lot of privacy issues. So metadata is what's going to help them define what can be included in the model. Here are some highlights of the working group activities and each of these uh, working group chairs will be presenting this in the next presentation. So I will not go into a lot of detail, but uh, each and every one of our groups are working diligently to improve X3D and uh, to add new features and make it available to our members uh, uh, with 4.0. These are the two new working groups and if you're really interested in web in, uh, interoperability, I think the semantic web is a great group to get involved with. And another important working group is um, the user experience uh, working group. Um, and I think this is a very important uh, aspect of 3D, which is sometimes overlooked on uh, how to have effective interaction techniques uh, for different 3D web technologies. And please join us and uh, help us solve some important problems. Uh, we are working hard to make uh, this interface rich for our users um, and make navigation intuitive. There are several benefits of joining the consortium. Uh, marketing benefits, there are business opportunities. We work on joint grants. We partner with our SDOs. So when you are a member of the consortium, you have the ability to attend their meetings and learn about our SDOs. Uh, standards development and there's there are a lot of uh, opportunities to network with research experts uh, 3d companies industry leaders there are a lot of lessons learned that are shared so this is a very very welcoming open community so if uh, you are really interested in building business critical uh, high-end uh, 3d applications this is the group you need to engage with and learn a lot about their problems, their solutions, and how they are building these mission-critical applications. There are a lot of good resources available on our website. Please um, check them out. And if you have any questions, you can always uh, send us email through our public email uh, list. Some of our upcoming events, uh, we have the webinars coming up. Uh, today was our first day and tomorrow we will have Learn X3D. And then uh, on um, Wednesday, we're going to have the X3D browsers and Thursday is X3D tools. So please uh, go check out, it's all uh, on our website um, and uh, you should be able to register, we are still open.
Uh, we will be having a virtual booth at SIGGRAPH for 2020 this year. Um, please join us if you plan to attend SIGGRAPH. Uh, please check us out. And then we, it's our 25th anniversary. We have uh, a virtual Web3D 2020 conference, and it's going to be free. So this is a great opportunity to connect and learn about our community. Uh, there will be a lot of research papers that would be published, um, and uh, a lot of uh, many tutorials and workshops uh, to really bring this community together and learn from each other. So this was a brief overview of uh, the consortium and our standard XPD. Um, there is uh, more coming uh, in the next hour or two. Uh, we will be talking about all the business critical applications that our members are developing. Our working group chairs will be presenting all the great work that they're doing. And then we'll have a, a presentation of uh, XVD version 4 and uh, the highlights of version 4. Uh, again, participation is always welcome. Uh, join us as we build XVD. Uh, join us as we evolve this open platform. Suggestions are always welcome. Join our working groups, uh, come to our conferences, um, meet and network uh, with our community. There is a lot of experience here. There are a lot of lessons learned that uh, people are willing to share. And we really hope that you come back and uh, engage with us and uh, build these uh, mission critical 3D applications using open software. Thank you.